Let's head straight to Canberra. Nationals MP Keith Pitt joins me from Parliament House. Keith, that the coalition is standing up for free speech, vowing to oppose Labor's misinformation laws. Uh, what are the chances that this Orwellian bill, and I've written about this bill from the start, what are the chances it's going to pass the upper house and uh, become law? Uh, Rita, great to be with you. Uh, I was out on this as, in January, uh, as were a number of commentators, uh, including yourself, because this is the Ministry of Truth. Uh, it is absolutely Orwellian. Mm. Uh, and I'd almost guarantee uh, that the Senate will pass this with the support of the Greens. Uh, <laughs> these people are communists. Mm. That's what they want. Now, I am all for cracking down on foreign interference. That shouldn't be allowed. I'm also all for getting rid of fake accounts. You should have your real name attached to your online social media accounts because it's the real world now. Uh, but the idea that a department, ACMA, will determine whether something is a fact or not and make recommendations uh, to the providers to either remove it or do something about it, I think that is really dangerous for free speech. I think it's incredibly dangerous uh, for our democracy in particular, and it should be stopped. It is absolutely appalling. This is the biggest threat to free speech in this country. These measures are unprecedented. And if they become law, it's just a, not, another battleground at the next election. I, you would hope that the coalition would stick to its principles and really fight back against these measures. Now, I want to ask you about the United Nations. They've declared the Great Barrier Reef is no longer in danger. It didn't take long for the Prime Minister to take all the credit. This confirms my government is working hard to protect the reef, is acting on climate change, and that the rest of the world has, of course, taken notice. <laughs> Keith, what do you make of this development? Oh, it's a miracle, Rita, a miracle. I mean, straight after the election, UNESCO announced that the reef was now protected and <laughs> saved. It was about three weeks after the election of the Labor government. But in the fine print today <laughs> and in the media reports today, we have seen that the, the deal, UNESCO, this is an organisation based in Paris, have basically demanded that Hell's Gate mm -hmm. Dam and Urana Dam, they're gone. Uh, we've lost all of our gillnet fishing in Queensland. We've put those small businesses and those fisher, fishermen out of business. All of the processing that goes with it. How on earth do we have someone based in Europe telling the Australian government and the Australian people they can't utilise their own seafood stocks they can't build dams to drive infrastructure, to drive the economy, to provide jobs, to help us grow more agriculture. And the Federal Labor Government has rolled over on it, all for a Great Barrier Reef, which last year was in Great Nick and it still is. Well, yeah, we've had some fairly comprehensive data in the last year on the Great Barrier Reef showing how healthy it is, showing how much growth there has been. And, uh, for, yeah, for the government to roll over here, you would think it was unnecessary. Now, I want to ask you about an issue that's concerning householders across the country, and that's the power bills and, and the soaring costs there. Uh, we're going to get the latest power bills and some of those are going to be up 30%. So it's going to be a fair bit of bill shock for people. Labor's promise of a $275 saving is a bit of a fantasy right now. But Keith, I've got to ask, are the coalition actually offering anything better? Last time I checked, you lot are signed up to net zero. That's your policy as well. Uh, how can you really advocate for households and advocate for lower electricity costs when you've signed up to essentially the same policy? Uh, well, firstly, Rita, if we saw the wellbeing report from the Treasurer, Jim Chalmers, he used data to indicate that the Australian people were far better off under us. He used data from the Coalition's time in government to show <laughs> just how much better off Australians were. But in terms of electricity, our policies were always clear and we will have a proposition before the election. Uh, we need to continue with our existing coal-fired power stations. We need to introduce nuclear. You can't continue to cover the country in blankets of solar panels and thousands, literally thousands of wind turbines. Uh, it, it just doesn't work. The costings are extraordinary. They are miles out and we're but seeing Keith, the results right see now of Labor the... policy. We are, and we're going to keep seeing it. We've seen what's happened in Europe, so we've had a preview of what to expect here. But are we going to see the coalition deviate from this net zero policy? Because until you do, until you give the Australian people a clear choice at the ballot box, this is all we've got on offer. Soaring prices, less reliability. 
Uh, we'll have that debate again, Reddy. You can be sure of that. Uh, there's been some discussions around even just this week because what's really clear is the cost of net zero under Labor's policies, it, it is extraordinary. 2030, they want to have a lot of this done by. Mm -hmm. People can't afford to live now. I literally have people living in tents under the bridges in my towns because they can't pay their bills, they can't pay rent, they can't find somewhere to live. And it is a result of Labor's policies and their changes. They've interjected themselves into the market. The results are there. They're plain. They are on your electricity bill. Uh, and yet we see Jim Chalmers and uh, Chris Bowen and others stand at the dispatch box to tell Australians how well off they are under a Labor budget, uh, under a Labor government. Well, I think that's wrong and every Australian knows it. Uh, and they're still claiming that renewables are the cheapest form of energy when we just know that is not the fact. That's not been the experience anywhere in the world. Keith Pitt, thank you so much for your time tonight.